Hello, everybody. Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. Welcome to Cobra Conversion 7 in the year 2023. And it is my privilege to have a guest here. This is Codename New202. Uh, he has been a participant in Cobra Convergence going back several years now. Uh, and uh, it's my privilege to introduce uh, Codename New202. And um, I, I'll start with uh, asking you to just uh, tell people a little bit about yourself and tell people what you do. Oh, uh, first of all, I'm really ecstatic to be a part of Cobra Convergence once again. I think I started in Cobra Convergence number three, unofficially, but officially um, Cobra Convergence number four. So to see this grow to this level it's absolutely been amazing. And, and uh, I can't thank you enough for, you know, starting this and keeping up with it. But uh, a little bit about myself, um, my channel, Codename New Tamiro 2, I started back in 2015. Um, uh, you know, I've been a lifelong G.I. Joe fan. I actually completed working for several government agencies. Um, that's kind of how I started. And, you know, between my father being a Marine during uh, the Vietnam era and, um, you know, my involvement working in several government agencies, you could, you, you could see me leading to that and how GI Joe kind of triggered that. But what my channel does is basically, I felt that there was a gap in covering the IDW run of GI Joe comics. So we had you, and we had our one good friend, Forum BX257, who did all the Marvel runs. But, you know, I saw that there was not really, first of all, I was shocked that G.I. Joe was still going on. And it was actually when Snake Eyes, the death of Snake Eyes, that kind of brought me back into the comics. I was sitting, um, I was a government auditor. So I was sitting at my desk and on Yahoo, I saw longtime G.I. Joe hero Snake Eyes dies. And I'm like, what? But that's one of the reasons I kind of got it, uh, got started. And the fact that I felt that Larry Hama, as a writer, as someone that has contributed to this uh, pop culture altogether, wasn't getting the uh, respect from this younger generation. So I decided that, hey, with the encouragement of you, our friend um, uh, Carson from 3D Joe's, uh, G.I. Joe Berg. I mean, I was a fan first, and I think that's what makes Cobra Convergence it's fun is taking our fandom to the next level. So that's kind of uh, what my channel is about. We recap the modern G.I. Joe comics, but since we're on a little bit of a hiatus, I've been also looking at other uh, Gen X or 80s properties, kind, kind of get us older guys back into this hobby that we loved so much. So basically that's the, uh, the whole spiel of what my channel is all about. Uh, you said that uh, Larry hadn't gotten the, the respect that he deserved, but more recently uh, he won an Eisner award. Do you feel yes. a little vindicated about yes. that? Do you like the I, people are starting to recognize? Yeah. I, I think that that's what's um, like, it's funny because I've, my whole hat is in the GI Joe world, but then I've been putting, because of covering the IDW run, I've had a little bit of step in what these modern comic people are looking at or what they're, so it's kind of, you see that whole nostalgia trend that was coming around 2021. So I guess some people are starting to read more, especially the Wolverine run that he had. And I know he recently completed an Iron Fist run. Um, so, it's interesting to like see it and kind of like, you know, I'm very happy for him to get the respect that he so richly deserves. Uh, it is true that uh, the Marvel run is talked about a lot more. Um, I think, I mean, well, it began with Marvel. So, and a lot of us grew up with Marvel, but what appeals to you about the IDW run of the GI Joe comic book series that uh, Larry has been writing? Well, basically, the, what I've noticed is his actually his writing style. So now with the with Hasbro not breathing down his necks about his, each nitty gritty thing that they want to incorporate, he has this total writing freedom. And, you know, being I mean, I mean auditing the right for an audit is different than writing for creatively. 
but there's some similarities in the whole process. Like, you know, you want to hit certain benchmarks and you have some ideas you want to kind of convey. And I think he's able to do that, but at the same time, write in such a manner that it's not kid friendly anymore. Like, you know, I mean, even though the Marvel run, we, you know, issue 109, we had deaths and that's some of the things that we were exposed to. I think you're more seeing that in the IDW run. It's just expanding that. So it's just a natural progression of what the whole uh, Real American Hero line was going towards. And I, and I think his some of his best writing has been in the IDW run of A Real American Hero. Uh, we we teamed up on a review of Snake Eyes that included yes. the the uh, the death of Snake Eyes series, and you did the summary of that. Um, you, you've had a, a few years now to uh, to process that and to look back on it. Uh, how do you feel like it holds up now, looking back uh, on it uh, from from today's perspective? It, it's funny because it's one of the things that uh, I like, especially like uh, you know to. Rem- to get back into the Cobra convergence type of, you know, you kind of revisit some stuff that you, we, we did as a, as I like to call the HCC 78 family tree. So I kind of like to watch like what, not just me, but everybody did, but I think it holds up great. to some of the things that um, I discussed in that is that the, it, while the whole story arc kind of wasn't ah, like, you know, it was missing something, especially how, snake eyes died i mean we saw issue 300 you know i'm not gonna a spoiler warning but uh you know you know was meant to be it, yeah. it's like you know no one dies forever in comic books You're i'm right. not saying that snake eyes is back but remember there's a brainwave scanner out there that has most of snake eyes memories from a certain part of his life so imagine if you transmitted that into somebody else that just so happened to look like snake eyes that, that kind of did happen in that series with dr venom didn't yeah it? yeah we we have there has been precedent i guess uh yes. in the series for something like that happening and that's actually what kind of threw what was going to happen to snake eyes because i think this was around issue 260 when dr venom came back but it was kind of like taking something from the Batman animated series where the Joker kind of imprinted himself on uh, Tim Drake and he turned into the Joker. So I see that how Larry kind of took that and put a little bit of Dr. Venom into Dr. Mindbender. And then you get a new, I mean, I, of course, you, nowadays you have to, the science fiction element, I know we talked about that we are like the military aspect of it, some of the science fiction, but it's just a tough sell to have a strictly military type of, you have to add some of the fantasy elements. So, you know, you take it with the, you know, tongue in cheek, you know, as a story. Um, Is there a, a favorite story arc that you have in that series? Actually, I thought the the whole story arc with the the dawn of the Rashikage was with the Dawn Marino taking, you know, assuming that mantle. I know with this whole movement, some people are being turned off by the push of just females leads, unless it's well written down our throats. Like, you know, case in point, Ray from Star Wars. And a lot of people had issues with that. But when Larry did that with the Dawn Marino, you know, I thought it was well done it kind of you know you do have a little bit of a snake eyes aspect but you also have a character that's kind of you know broken inside but there's that essence to want to be a good person so you could either go it's kind of like the reverse anakin skywalker thing you could go bad or you could use your thing to go good and she chose to go down a good path The i would say one b is that a silent options story with the creation of um, with the whole backstory of Helix. And then you find out how terrible Hawk is in real life. Hawk is a (laughs) jerk. Like how he took a little innocent girl and made her into a killing machine. Like it just like Geneva code, all that stuff all out the window. Hawk is a jerk. There, there is there is a moral ambiguity that um, 
uh, that uh, Larry has been able to capture in this series, I think. Um, but I mean, you still have I, some nobility in some of the characters. I think that uh, Roblox is a character that um, that was uh, showed some some nobility and some uh, some integrity. Uh, Stalker, some of these guys. Uh, it's not. It's not a cynical series, I would say. No. Um, but uh, contrary to maybe popular belief, I have read most of the IDW series. But my next question for you is, for those of us who grew up on the Marvel series and still refer to the Marvel series, since I am review vintage stuff, I still refer to just the Marvel series. Yeah. What would you say to a Marvel G.I. Joe comics fan that might bring them in to read um, the IDW series and hopefully the uh, a continued series in the future. And that's what's, uh, I, I, what I do when I, every month I would do a recap. So I usually waited a month because I didn't want to take away from sales from, you know, we both know uh, Diana from IDW, all the, the GI Joe team from IDW have become really good friends and, they are real fans. I mean, hardcore fans that work on that. You know, we don't see that. I'm sorry to say that from the Hasbro team, you know, just watch a live stream. But um, the, the IDW team are real fans. So I usually wait a month. I'm always a, was a month behind because I didn't want to take away from sales. But during each recap, I always watch actually your videos a lot. You know, I'll reread the issue. I'll watch your video or form BX257, and then I'll do cross references to what the modern story is to what it was in the past. So this way, as a Marvel reader, when you watch my recaps for a few times and you want to go off on your own, you're able to connect the dots to see like, okay, this all makes sense. So my story that I love so much as a child has evolved and grown up, grown up along with me. So I think that's what I tried to do when I do did my monthly recaps uh, during the IDW run. Yeah, you mentioned Diana. Um, the the uh, well, we're referring to the IDW uh, series now. For those who probably everybody knows by now, that series is concluded with issue number three hundred. But there's the expectation that it will continue under another banner. Um, but um, you mentioned Diana. The, the team at IDW actually did have uh, people from the fan community uh, working with them. Yeah, uh, that, that is that is fairly uh, special and somewhat um, unusual, I think. Um, it, it is awesome. Did, did you been, like? Diana okay. has reached out and like on Facebook, she has asked questions like to select fans that you know she knows or trusts. And it's a trust that, you know, you, you know, you hold, you hold very dearly because you have the senior researcher for this team asking you about certain things. You know, this happened a few times, but yeah, I think how she did everything is, and she's one of the, and I, I told her this, you're one of the top five most important uh, GI Joe people in our community. Not only is she a good person, but I think she's a top five you know, you would be another one. And I think Carson would be another one just, you know, to give an example, but all of you have been carrying that flame that what we're seeing today, you know? So yeah, definitely. Uh, did you, did you catch the, what was the, the Saturday morning memories? Uh, I think that's what it was called. The, the series that was based on the animated style. Did you catch that one? Yes. And the funny thing is that same, uh, artist wrote, I think, on tissue issue 281. And when I and when he wrote, and it was uh, one with Snow Job on the cover, I mean, one of the covers. And I was reading that and I was like, this guy draw, draws a lot like the old Sunbow version. Sure enough. And when I said that to Diana, she's like, hold that thought. And then a few <laughs> months later, they announced that series. So I, I was like, this looks a lot like the. But that was well done. I think they're doing for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles now, and I think they're doing uh, for uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. so they're I continue that. I did see that, and it's a I, it's a great idea. I think um, a lot of fans came 
in through the animated series that just reached so many people did you yeah. have any um any association or any memories of the animated series did that have an impression on you well yeah uh, i remember like i i grew up outside of philadelphia i know during a, a certain super bowl me and you were kind of at odds uh, you know you know well uh, <laughs> we won't talk about who came out on top there. Uh, Carry but on. Anyway, but anyway, uh, I would re I remember coming home from school. And of course, I my Nana would finish watching General Hospital. Then after General Hospital, you have the He-Man, uh, G.I. Joe, and Transformers. So um, I loved the fact that they were real people. They didn't have special abilities they could be you know anybody i knew that could have a like a high moral sense to do the right thing that's what i tried another thing that i focus on the diversity of gi joe and the fact that you have a collected group of people of all different colors races faiths backgrounds coming together for a greater good to defeat this overall evil that's over here and that's the heart the meat and potatoes in my opinion of what gi joe especially this real american hero line is all about and i think that's what i i, uh, I wish some i would like more fans to kind of like gravitate to that because that's the essence of what makes this line so one of the best lines of all time uh, and i would say that um Larry in in the IDW run kind of leaned into that aspect of GI Joe, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, actually, wrote Larry actually was kind enough to write to me, especially around, around issue number two eighty three. Um, he introduced a and I'll you know be honest, he he introduced a Muslim GI Joe character, and for the first time in forty years. I had a GI Joe that was me and I, you know, he kind of like, you know, was really touched for me to like, you know, kind of incorporated that some of the things into this character called Mongoose. And um, I recently asked him if he's going to continue with this character because it was a big hit um, with a lot of people in my community. Like, so, it was, it was something to be proud of, you know, that, hey, we're portrayed as good people, not, you know, running around and doing bad stuff, you know, like what things. And I think, you know, my father serving in Vietnam as a U.S. Marine and me and my contributions to protecting this country, that was very important for me to see. And um, I, I remember sitting, lying next to my wife and I read that, those few panels, and I started to cry. You know, because it, it meant so much because it touched what he did, what I did, and what we're about as far as like keeping innocent people protected. And, you know, evil doesn't have a religion, a look or a, a, a color or anything like that. Evil is evil. So I, I was so glad that, you know, uh, Larry did that. And he's in, used women a lot more, not just you know, smart women with, you know, MIT degrees or hackers. He's been setting himself up where if it was presented correctly, that this modern day kids could actually identify with these, especially around that 281 to 283, all these new characters that he introduced towards the end, I could see them jumping forward with that as well as bring in the uh, legendary characters as well. So there is a chance. Uh, th there's always a lot of talk about like what's next for G.I. Joe and how do you make G.I. Joe relevant to uh, a new generation. But it sounds like um, from your perspective that Larry has already been kind of doing that. Um, he's, he's already been uh, developing G.I. Joe in a direction that is more modern and accessible i i 110 percent think that he has already laid the blueprint of what gi joe can transition into the future he's uh incorporated new characters that would appeal to a younger demographic we have a, a girl that's a hacker 
We have someone that does, uh, you know, makeup or disguising, kind of like the, the, we have different ethnicities, but they're all like, you know, Scarlet's still there. You know, we have Stalker still there. They're still points and they're serving as kind of like uh, role models to these young kids like Dawn Marino, Helix, you know, and th these other new people. We have a, a girl with a disability that's a new G.I. Joe. She has a, a, a prosthetic hand or arm. So it's something for everybody that everybody could identify with. Now, what the Hasbro team and how they're going to uh, incorporate that, or if there's any connection or conversations between the two, it does. I don't, you know, so far, yeah. it, you know, it's all behind the scenes. We, yeah. we, nobody's talking to us about it. No, uh, but it, uh, you know, if if they'd like my phone number, I'm sure I. If, if uh, they'd like to talk to you about it, I'll pass your, your number on. <laughs> I don't think Emily wants to talk to me. <laughs> um, uh, now that, I mean, we, after talking about the importance of G.I. Joe and um, how, um, how it's evolved over the ages and how it's uh, taught some important lessons, let's talk about Cobra. Yo, let's, now, let's now, let's, let's dive into evil let's 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 get in yes yeah, so let's turn to the dark side for a moment um do you have um is there a cobra character that um resonates with you in any particular way one that really stands out for you you know i've always loved destro as far as uh, a bad a bad character because he's a bad character with honor and nobility like I remember when uh, the Baroness wanted to ha kill Snake Eyes and he stood up and said, no, you are wrong to carry this hatred. He was He's an innocent man to stand up for what's right. And there's several other in instances where he had a, he would never cross his morals or his honor. For him, that was the big thing. So he is my one of my favorite bad i think vader uh i would say uh dr doom and uh destro are the, my three favorite baddies of all time so i mean it's, he's not pure evil but he's a bad guy but he's doing it for financial reasons so it's not like more of hurting people maliciously or having an evil or you know messed up in the head like kind of crazy he, like right he's he's not crazy i mean and, uh, let's, I'll, uh, not not to give him too much credit he is you know um profiting off of war, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So let's, <laughs> let's let's not give him the nobel prize yet, no, 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 but, no, yeah. <laughs> uh, but he no but he does have a sense of honor and he has principles he has morals and he sticks to it yeah. uh which is something you i you can't really say about cobra commander no um uh so yeah there there's a contrast there and that's some of some of that moral ambiguity that we talked talked about before it's i mean yes he's a bad guy but yeah. he's a different kind of bad guy and what makes cobra so interesting is that you see how like especially uh you know we're talking about the idw runs the the untold um tales of the baroness and how activism and extreme you know can lead you to you know, the wrong side, because I think that's what was amazing with the IDW run, you know, going back to that real quick, is that you saw how the Baroness being, you know, beautiful, smart, and all that stuff, you know, went to this extreme, because she's not as bad as, you know, Cobra Commander, or she's not also like Destro either, because it's her cause that is more important, you know, that is anything else where Destro is profitability, Cobra Commander is a different evil altogether. So you have all these levels of evil and how they kind of arise and how they came to be. And that's what's excellently written. And when you have to take a step back and analyze. I mean, I, I do this for a living for 15 years as a, a, an auditor, but <laughs> that, that's how I look at things. And it's amazing how these uh, characters are developed and just thinking about that is amazing how evil comes to be um so um I, I i guess it's safe to say that 
uh, Larry Hama is your preferred G.I. Joe writer. Um, yeah. Um, assuming, again, knock on wood, that the series uh, continues under a different banner, uh, will you be picking that up again uh, as soon as it starts rolling and, and continuing with the, uh, uh, the reviews and the summaries? That, that's a good question. Um, I actually sampled some of the Devil's Due run. Uh, you know, this was like, of course, I have to look. You know, this Kimikora that was just released um, is a Devil's Due character. And it's something that Larry incorporated into the Marvel run with, uh, you know, Sean Collins. You know, that's Sean Collins. He just, he had him before and he kind of like, you know, oh, okay, I, I could incorporate what he involved to what these other people written about him um i you know you have to be open and I, like i gave the snake eyes movie i wanted that movie to be good and you know this like i was like all right i was open to it being this that this i was totally open to it the end product was like oh it's kind of like <laughs> we the experience with star wars too like we we all went into these sequel series oh. With the breadth of you know, and then we got what we got. So we, we are like we're we're rounding up our uh, our time here, and you dive into uh, the Snake Eyes movie, which is a topic that uh, we we could unpack for for quite a long time. That's that's <laughs> a can of worms that you know the future the future discussion we oh. we can uh, we can dive into that. There Definitely. is so <laughs> much to say. So, so much. much. Um, but, um, yeah, but we do have a few more minutes. Um, would you like to talk about, um, uh, I know that everybody will see this during Cobra Convergence. Um, the, this video should go up on the same day that your contribution goes up on the calendar. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have, um, uh, can you give anyone a preview, even if it's not of your Cobra Convergence stuff, but just a preview of what you have planned coming up for the future? Well, um, it's going to be, I'm not going to just do this one. I mean, of course I have my one official day, but as you know, I do different videos throughout the month of Cobra, just like kind of like you, I don't make it official. I make it unofficial, but it all ties into Cobra convergence. Um, but the one important thing I wanted to leave with everybody as we wrap up is that it is very important for all of you fans out there to go and subscribe to every single one of these content creators uh, uh, channels because it's like a pat on the back. I remember many of these fans were there during the quote unquote dark eras when there was no GI Joe. And it's important that if, if you're new, you rediscovered GI Joe, please, you know, these are hard fans that work nine to five and they do this. No, you know, no one has a hundred zillion subscribers they don't do this to get money, whatever. They're doing this because they're fellow fans. And nothing is fandom than a pat on the back. And you could do that by commenting, liking, subscribing to all these people's channels. It's very important to do that because that's what Hasbro and all these other people are looking at. How are the fan base rallying? That's why other fan bases have become popular and we're still kind of you know, yeah, we got classified. We're not there yet. We still want to see a good movie and we want to see a younger generation carry on that flame for us because we're not going to be here on earth forever. And just like the 12 inch guys did for us, we need to pass it on to another generation. And everything you just said, uh, subscribing, commenting, um, that, that's all free. Free of charge, free easy thing to do, and uh, an easy way to recognize the people uh, who are fans but are also uh, uh, contributing something to the fandom and to the the overall love of this uh, this property, this brand, and the, these uh, toys and these comic books that uh, have been such a part of our lives. So um, I I think that's our time. So I will say thank you to Codename New 2 Vera 2. As you are seeing this right now, um, his video should be up on his YouTube channel. There will be a link. Um, and uh, so go check it out. Subscribe. Uh, give it a, a thumbs up. Comment. Uh, and do all the free stuff 
<laughs> that you can do uh, that shows your support. So uh, thank you. Uh, thank you again. Any any parting words for uh, you? You made actually made some great parting words, but any last words for uh, for our audience? Yeah. Um, remember, like GI Joe is the fan base, and it we're all passionate about it. So let's keep this going. I'm already looking forward to Cobra Conversions eight. And I'm looking forward to doing this for many more years. And again, we have to thank this man. Was it this way? This way. <laughs> this man. This man for all for his efforts and everything. And thank you for uh, making me part of the HCC 78 family tree. It's really been, you know, a, a, an honor and a friendship for all these years. Uh, thank you. It's been an honor for me as well. And uh, thank you to you. Uh, and thank you to everyone else uh, who has worked so hard. You, you've seen a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. You've seen uh, what everybody puts into it. So thank you to everyone who has your name on the list this year, who has ever had your name on the list uh, of contributors. Uh, you you uh, have done so much to keep uh, keep this fandom alive. So uh, thank you again, Codename New 2 Vera 2. Thank go you. Go immediately right now and go check out his video and uh, we will see you there. See you guys. Bye. Bye.